All right, it's GED question of the daytime. And once again, we've got one of those algebra problems that scares the crap out of students, looks awful, and yet it's actually super, super simple if you just have this one little basic algebra skill. So let me show it to you, okay? So don't panic, like really, don't panic. <laughs> Let's read it first. It says, evaluate the function for x equals negative three. And then it has this kind of funny looking uh, equation and maybe you've not seen this notation before so we read that the f parentheses x we actually don't read it as f times x if I wanted to say f times x I would just shove the two letters together but we read that notation as f of x and what I'm saying is that this is a function of x um, and so what I'm saying is that the problem here has an x in it that's really what that says and so what you need to realize about this notation f of x is that even though you don't know it by this name, you really do know it. So f of x is the formal name for y. <laughs> That's all that f of x means. It's not extra math to do. You don't have to multiply something together. There's not something extra to do. That's just the formal name for y. It's just like if your name was, I don't know, Lisa Schmidt. If I knew you well, I could just call you Lisa. I can just call this function y, it would be informal. But if I was trying to be formal or I didn't know you very well, I might call you Mrs. Schmidt. I might be very formal. F of x is a very formal way of saying y. And so you may totally just ignore this f of x, pretend like it says y. Um, and maybe this problem will not look so gross to you anymore. So sometimes that's all students need to realize that. Other students though still look at this and they go, okay, okay, fine, that's still why, but this still looks like gross to me. What do I do? Okay, did you read the directions? Did you notice this cool thing? It says evaluate the function for x equals negative 3. As soon as I saw that, I got super excited. I said, aha, mystery solved. x is not a mystery. This is not really an algebra problem where you have to go around figuring out what x is or something like that. Um, x is known. He's negative 3. And so what this is is a substitution problem. We're going to go in and we're going to change all the x's to negative 3's. Let's give it a try. So we won't change y because we don't know what he is. We won't change symbols and we won't change numbers. But we will change every x we see into negative 3. Notice when I plug in numbers, I frequently do it within parentheses. I'm like, when in doubt, use parentheses. There's a couple of reasons I'm using parentheses here. One, because x is shoved up against 5. I know they're multiplying. Another reason, because x is being squared, and I know that when I raise a negative number to a power, it's important to use parentheses. So there was a few reasons for me to use parentheses. But guess what? You'll never go wrong if you use parentheses, okay? So when you substitute in a um, number you can substitute in with parentheses. So again, I kept my negative, I kept my 2, my x turned into negative 3, and I'll keep my plus from above and my 15. So basically I just rewrote the equation exactly the same as before except now all the x's have been replaced with negative 3's. I've substituted them out. And now you can see this is not an algebra problem. The way, reason I can tell this is not an algebra problem is that the letters are already alone. So see that y, it's already alone, so it's already solved for y. When y is alone on his side of the equal sign, it's solved for y. And then on the right-hand side, notice this is all numbers and operations. There's no variables, no letters. And so all this is is an arithmetic problem. Now, it's a gross arithmetic problem. There's lots of steps. If you want to simplify it, you better bust out the order of operations, but it's still an arithmetic problem, okay? So... Let's do that. Let's simplify this by hand first, then we'll check our work in our handy dandy TI-30XS calculator if you're wondering how to do it in there. Okay, so first I'm going to simplify this sucker by hand. I'm going to do the math by hand on the right hand side. Um, and because there's more than one thing to do, look at this, there's multiplying, there's powers, there's subtraction, there's addition. I am going to need uh, the order of operations. And you always follow the order of operations when simplifying more than one 
operation. So I will do any groupings first. Scan through this problem, there's no groupings. Even though there are parentheses, there's nothing inside the parentheses to do. There's no groupings. Okay. Next thing to do is any exponents, and I do see an exponent. See one of the little floating numbers. Remember, exponents are both the floating numbers and the square root houses. So I see that right here, negative 3 squared. Now be really careful when you go to square negative 3. I'm going to do this in side work to show you what it means. That's why I told you to put it in parentheses. Squaring negative 3 means taking negative 3 and multiplying it by negative 3. And as hopefully you guys know, a negative times a negative is a positive. So when I square negative 3, I'm going to get 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 would be positive 9. Now, uh, that's all the uh, uh, exponents that I have. I've got no more floating numbers, no more powers, and I've got no more, um, I've got none, I never had any, um, square root houses. So now I'm going to drop everything I haven't used. I still need to multiply my 5 and my 9, I still need my negative 2 to multiply with my 3, and I still need to add 15. Great. Order of operation says after you're done with the exponents, take care of the multiplication. So I'm going to do this and this. Okay, 5 times 9 is 45. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. But do you see this little minus sign here? I'm going to do a shortcut trick because I'm so lazy. I'm going to treat this like a negative 2. Now you might say, Kate, is that a negative 2 or is that a minus 2? And I'm like, yes. It depends if you're multiplying or you're adding and subtracting. When you're multiplying, it's a negative 2. When you're adding or subtracting, it's a minus 2. And it's important that you can look at it both ways. So right now I'm multiplying. So that's negative 2 times negative 3. Well, I know negative 2 times negative 3 would give me positive 6. And so instead of getting a subtract 6, I'm going to get an add 6. Positive 6 is like adding 6. That was kind of a ninja trick there. Now, I haven't yet used up my plus 15. So I'll drop that down. Now some people get mad at me. They say, Kate, why don't you drop the minus? Because I used it when I multiplied. I used it like it was a negative sign. So negative 2 times negative 3 gave me positive 6. So it ended up turning into a plus. And now this is just an addition problem. 45 plus 6 plus 15. 45 plus 6 plus 15. And I got to tell you the truth. If you were in my math class, I would make you write that right below. Equals the answer because I like my math always to go down, but since I ran out of space, I'll break my own rule and go off to the right. That's equal to 66. Equal to 66. Now, isn't it rude of me? I made you work the whole thing by hand before I told you how to do it in a TI-30XS calculator. But just to let you know, right here, after your perfect substitution step, after you got rid of all the variables on the right hand side of the equation, you can just plug this entire expression into your calculator um, and your TI can do order of operations on its own. So you don't need to worry about doing the order of operations, okay? However, it'll only do it if your substitution is good. So make sure you do your substitution step first. But I can write this down and type this in now. Five open parentheses, negative three, make sure you use for this guy, since he's multiplying right now, you're going to use need to use the negative three, that's down on the bottom of the calculator, the negative. Now I want to uh, close that parentheses, close parentheses, and square it. To square, you press the x squared button. So I'm going to press x squared, and then minus two, minus 2, because this is not in the parentheses, this is technically a minus. Your calculator's stupid. You know it goes both ways as both a negative 2 and a minus 2, but your calculator's a little foolish, so make sure you put minus 2 times negative 3, and we're going to add that with 15. And if I type that in my calculator, I do get 66. Yay, good math, and I'm not... Uh, screwing up in front of the world. Okay, so 66 is the correct answer when I evaluate this function for x equals negative 3. If you have any questions about this, be sure to drop them in the comments. I'd love to answer them. I hope that you can see that this is a much simpler problem than it looks. And I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if you got one just like this on your test because they know students freak out when they see f of x. Uh, but it's not hard. It's just a little trick to understand. All right, till next time.